How would you like to come home to a bartender who will fix you any cocktail you want? I'll have an old fashioned. I'll have a margarita. Now you can with the Bartesian Home Cocktail Maker. Bartesian is a sleek machine the size of a coffee maker that makes premium cocktails at the touch of a button. Choose from over 50 different cocktails, from classics to the most exotic premium cocktails served in the best bars today. You'll always get freshly mixed, perfectly balanced cocktails with the Bartesian Cocktail Maker. And now get Bartesian's best Black Friday deal ever at bartesian.com slash cocktail. Entertaining? The Bartesian is ideal for parties. No need to stock all kinds of individual mixers for complicated recipes. Every guest gets the cocktail of their choice in seconds. The Bartesian makes a wonderful gift for anyone who loves a fine premium cocktail. Now get Bartesian's best Black Friday deal ever. It's available right now. Only at Bartesian.com slash cocktail. That's B-A-R-T-E-S-I-A-N dot com slash cocktail for Bartesian's best deal ever. Only at Bartesian.com slash cocktail. Well, well, well. Shopping for a car? Yep. Carvana made financing a car as smooth as can be. Oh, yeah? I got pre-qualified instantly and had real terms personalized just for me. Hmm. Doesn't get much smoother than that. Well, I got to browse thousands of car options on Carvana, all within my budget. Doesn't get much smoother than that. It does. I actually wanted a car that seemed out of my range, but I was able to add a cosigner and found my dream car. It doesn't get much... Oh, it gets smoother. It's getting delivered tomorrow. Visit Carvana.com or download the app to get pre-qualified today. What's going on, all you devil dogs out there? Welcome to the Pop Culture Field Manual podcast, sitting right at the intersection of weapons, action, the military, and, of course, pop culture. My name is Cameron Fapp, and with me is the awesome, handsome, and delightful Israel Wright. Thank you. All those things are completely accurate, Cameron. You are delightful as well, and today... We have the great pleasure of doing a special episode focusing all on Marines in pop culture, folks. But before we get into that, we just want to give a special shout out to all our Patreon subscribers. Folks, if you want the full pop culture field manual experience, you got to check out the Patreon, folks. We got full episodes, uh, extra episodes, and then also we do a monthly live stream with our top tier subscribers. We want to give a shout out to Corey, who subscribed to the Salty Sergeant tier uh, Egan Khan actually upped his commitment from Fuzzy Damn, Private leveled up. to Salty Sergeant. Yes. He's, uh, he's always out. being a lifer, I can tell. Yeah, uh, And then Todd Pruitt, subscribe to the lifer tier. So folks, uh, yeah, go over and check out our Patreon, PCFM Podcast Patreon. And uh, check out our merch. Go to our socials, uh, go to our Instagram. There's a link tree link in there. You can go to our, uh, go to our merch page. We got t-shirts, we got soft pillows and hearty coffee drinking mugs. They don't drink yes. the coffee. You drink coffee from them. But uh, of course, uh, lots of good stuff, uh, folks. And it's good to be here. We're very privileged and excited to honor the Marines today for no other particular reason than uh, Marines are just Marines are just awesome. They're they're hard yeah. charging. There's this mystique, uh, this this kind of um, aura of of hard charging kind of hardcore attitudes when it comes to being a Marine. You know what I mean? Like when you're a Marine, uh, you're always a Marine. In the army, sometimes you know people join the army. They're like, yeah, I was in the army for a little while. Maybe they might carry it with them throughout their lives, or maybe they'll just be like, yeah, it's whatever, it's a job, you know. But when you're marine, I feel like there's this special passion sometimes that yeah. goes with being a marine that uh, I think yeah. is pretty cool. No, I I 100% agree. Like you know, throughout all the branches, we all have amazing things and a and a and a great history uh, backing you know that service. But all the Marines that I know, even more than the other branches, are just damn proud to be, you know, Marines. Even though they're under-equipped, they're underfunded, <laughs> you know. They, it, they, it's crazy, but the pride that comes from being, you know, in the Marine Corps, and it goes for everyone that I've ever met. Uh, whether, you know, they were infantry guys or not even special operations dudes, but just, right. you know, down to the lowest level of the Marine Corps. They are so damn proud to be in the Marines. It it makes this, you know, this elite fighting force that, you know, continues to draw in people just because, you know, their tagline is just, do you want to be a Marine? 
Like we are the Marine Corps. Why wouldn't you want to be a Marine? Yeah, right? their, and that's their what PR gets campaign. People. Yeah, they, their yeah. Key, their PR campaign has not changed really at its core for like 30, 40 years. Yeah, you know? it's like why wouldn't you want to be a Marine? Because we're the best. Yeah. You know, it's, the few, so the I proud. Have, the few, the proud, the Marines, right? And that is very true because they are very few. And and not just in their numbers, but in their funding as well. But they are damn proud, that's for sure. Um, so, you know, shout out to all, all Marines out there. You have my deep respect because, you know, I love the Marine Corps. I think they're a different breed and not just because they're called devil dogs, but uh, just because they are they are true, like barrel chested, freedom fighting Americans in the Marine Corps. <laughs> Um, so, you know, I love my Marines. I'm, I'm glad you guys are around and I'm excited to talk about some, you know, pieces of pop culture that feature the Marine Corps because some of my favorite military movies, you know, or favorite, you know, scenes out of military movies come from films featuring the Marine Corps. Um, so, I mean, what do you love about pop culture portrayals of the Marines and what do you not love, Izzy? Well, I think they're really good at capturing the hardcore dedicated nature of Marines. You always have this feeling like, you know, listen, the army is amazing. They they have uh, no end of stories that you could tell about the cool things that they've done. But it's this feeling of like, when you want someone to take that hill, when you need somebody to take that hill, you, you call, call the Rangers. Call the no, I'm, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm kidding. No, you called the Marines. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, um, so I appreciate whenever they capture that uh, that aspect of it. Um, there's also, I think, sometimes that hardcore, like hard charging nature of the Marines can can backfire and maybe not not maybe not be so healthy. Like there's a healthy way to go about it, and maybe not sure. such a healthy way to go about it. And so that has been that has been portrayed in in movies and and pop culture sometimes. And then also, you know, unfortunately, sometimes you hear some of the some of the stuff that has gone on. And yeah. what I'm sure is, is a small minority of military unit or Marine units, but, uh, you know, it's like, they just go a little overboard. And I, I think that if you want to accurately and lovingly portray somebody in something in pop culture, a group in pop culture, you have to portray both sides. So, sure. um, you know, I, I don't like it. I've never liked it when in pop culture, Marines or really any, any kind of military unit is portrayed in only one way, like in a, in a negative way, maybe, maybe in a, in a, like a glowing rose colored glasses, positive way, but like, uh, you know, like they're all just a bunch of like degenerates or they're a bunch of mentally ill, mentally, you know, like PTSD yeah. ridden, you know, sad sacks, you know, and so they've been destroyed yeah. by their military service, uh, you know, uh, so I guess maybe I'm just a fan of balance, you know, what about you? Yeah. For me, man, I love because, in my opinion, the Marine Corps is one of the most disciplined branches mm. in like because, I mean, when you don't I keep coming back to this, but when you're not well funded at all, like you come down to your roots. And I think the Marine Corps is one of the most disciplined branches of all time. Like they have been one of the most singular branches that the standard is never deviated from. You know, there's been a lot of. uh there's been a lot of, uh, you know, talk, especially in recent years, about, like, dropping standards and, you know, allowing, you know, more people to come in. But to me, the Marine Corps has, like, stuck to their guns mm. and refused to change for nobody. So <laughs> I, I definitely have seen that in pop culture just translate over. Like, anytime you see a Marine unit in a movie or in a TV show, they're just well-disciplined, you know. The sergeants take charge. The... the uh, the so uh, the marines underneath them like you know will follow them to the end and to the near and to me that's pretty accurate and plus the pride that comes from being a marine is totally uh you know portrayed in pop culture i mean the negative thing is you know obviously it, each unit has uh like each unit has you know turds in it and whatnot and like some units are more elite than others uh I'm probably going to get flacked for saying this, but like, <laughs> <laughs> but like, just because you're Marine doesn't mean you are equivalent to a Ranger. Okay. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Yes. But like, yes. but I mean, they're an elite fighting force, but sometimes, you know, in movies and they do it with every branch saying like, just because you're a military unit means like you are the top of the top. Uh, so sometimes in, you know, in pop culture, they're like, everybody is just the most elite thing. And I feel like they do that with Marine Corps movies. Um, but I mean, on like my hats off to the Marine Corps infantry, because like, mm. you know, I think about my experience in Ranger Regiment and like, you know, how we were able to PT every morning and still, you know, 
and still go out to the bars Thursday through Sunday, just get shit house, and then come back on Monday and be able to run a five mile in like 34 minutes, 33 minutes, and just do our jobs and continue with the camaraderie and the hazing. And the Marine Corps does that. Like those dudes, <laughs> the stories I hear from the barracks in the Marine Corps, especially on the grunt side of life, is, oh man, dude, it's like, there is no escaping. There is no escaping. You need to fully immerse yourself in the devil dog behavior and the shenanigans. Um, so, you know, that's that's something I also love about the Marine Corps. Um, but what was your, another question for you, what was your perception of the Marines from the time you first learned about them until now? Right, right. Well, I, it's, I started off by saying, you know, there's that kind of, that kind of uh, aura about them, like they're, they're going to be the ones that you that you call upon to hit, take the hill. They're the ones that are going to sacrifice themselves and just throw their throw their bodies fully into the mission. And I remember yeah. I've I watched a lot of I watched a lot of movies as a kid that I probably shouldn't have, like uh, Full Metal Jacket that we'll we'll talk about a little bit later, and other things like that that just gave this kind of like perception to Marines that they're like they're just like these wild eyed crazy killer guys, you know. And then as I've grown up, my view I think has become more balanced. Like, oh, they're mm-hmm. people too. And, uh, you know, I've, I had a, as a cousin of mine, uh, Cody, that went into the Marines for a couple of years. And uh, I've, I've known a couple of people that have gone in and come out. And we, we know a couple of people now, uh, Donnie O'Malley from Vet TV yeah. uh, and um, uh, Jason and Patrick from Savage Actual. We've interacted with them more than a couple of times. And, and just to see that they're full-fledged human beings, right? That yeah, that they're the being in Marines has is a part of who they were, but it doesn't encompass yeah. all that they are. And then a lot, but all those people especially continue to give back to the community by creating content. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. Donnie O'Malley does the uh, he's got the Irreverent Warriors kind of uh, charity thing that he does, where they they help prevent veteran suicide by humor, keep things light, yeah. and bringing people up through humor to prevent veteran suicide. That's no, amazing. Yeah, it's uh, it's super cool. So. Uh, I is. have a lot of respect for the Marines that I know personally. Uh, and then, of course, in pop culture, taking the good with the bad as well. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I actually was the first when I was, you know, I've been interested in joining the military since I was super young. Like, that's always been what I saw myself doing from a young age. Like, hmm. you know, I never I never applied for college in high school. Like, that wasn't my goal. Even while like, you, you were know, dancing? Even while I was dancing, like I'm gonna be yes, a dancing Marine. Yeah, of course, I'm dancing, dancing Marine. Marine. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the first recruiter that I visited was the Marine Corps. And I was like, I mean, just not knowing what, you know, just being somebody that, you know, just absorbed pop culture and, you know, didn't do too much research on the military. To me, the Marine Corps was the place I wanted to be because that's what I thought was the most full-fledged military service you can join. And that's like, if you wanted to completely immerse yourself in being a soldier or being in the military, the Marine Corps was the way to go. And I was actually fully depth in the Marine Corps at the recon contract. And I was going to like their, you know, their future Marine programs and working out with them. And I even had like the Marine Corps shirt and the Marine Corps like keychain and everything. Oh my gosh. Like I was full fledged. There is even a picture of me. Uh, I can't even, I don't even know where it is anymore, but it's a picture of me and all my Marine Corps, uh, Corps <laughs> like swag with a Marine recruiter, like ready to go. Wow. Um, but obviously when I was, uh, you know, my family played a role in my decision because my mother at the time was like, okay, like she supported my decision to join the military, but she's like, I want you to, instead of just like going full fledged into this, I want you to explore the other branches and see what they have to author, or at least, you know, see what they have to offer. So I did a quick Google search of like the funding of the branches and I saw that the Marine Corps is the least funded branch out of all of it because they are the Department of the Navy. So they basically Navy gets all their funding and basically and then the Navy will cut the Marine Corps off a piece of that funding, which is little to nothing. And then I saw the Army, which was the most funded military branch in you know the U.S. military. And I was like, huh, I'll go talk to them. So I talked to the Army recruiter and. Yeah, there was a lot of things about the recruiting process, like you could, you know, pick your own job in the Army instead of the Marine Corps, where you go in with something called open contract, where it's like, you want to do this, but it's a giant umbrella. So, like, say, they're like, you go in as a mechanic, but you don't get to choose what kind of mechanic you are, like when you get in the Marine Corps, they assign it to you. So you don't really get to choose your job. Mm. Um, so, but the army, you can go in and specifically pick the job that you want to do. Uh, the only difference is like in the army for infantry, especially if you go in, which is known as 11 X-ray, not 11 Bravo. 
uh, when you get to basic training, uh, which is what I did. I enlisted with an 11 X-ray option 40, which is a Ranger contract. When you mm-hmm. get to infantry OSIT, you can either be an infantryman or you can be a mortarman. So that's like you literally just get picked. 11 Bravo luck or of 11 the draw. Charlie. Yeah, while you're yeah. there. So they, they assign you. And luckily for me, I was given 11 Bravo, which is exactly what I wanted because – no disrespect to my mortarman out there, but I don't. I did not want to be a mortarman. That, <laughs> it, yeah, it just didn't sound cool to me. You know, those tube stro- I love my tube strokers, but it wasn't the. It wasn't for me. I wanted to be a rifleman. Mm. Um, so I got lucky with that. Um, but same thing in the Marine Corps. Like you get you assigned for infantry, but there's you know rifleman is its own MOS. It's its own you know job title. It's O three eleven. But then yeah. you also can be assigned as a machine gunner, which is its own. MOS, and then you can also be assigned as a sniper, which is its own MOS. You could be assigned as a, you know, a mortarman, which is its own MOS. So, like, there's that not guarantee of what you get when mm. you enlist in the Marine Corps. So that's what kind of drove me to join the Army. Uh, but yeah, at the time, my perception of the Marine Corps was they are the best of the best. Like, you know, listening to the recruiters and listening to their stories and you know about their time. As a young kid, I was like, oh, yeah, this is the branch I want to be in. But honestly, I'm very happy with my decision in the Army uh, and, you know, joining the Rangers. Uh, But up until now, I love the Marine Corps. I think they're the most full-fledged military service there is. And, you know, even down to, like, the basic, the lowest level of, like, Marine Corps grunt or just every Marine's a rifleman, they say. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just the pride. I keep going back to that, the pride they have for their job. Um, because the Marine Corps is a very historically, you know, significant branch. They've done a lot. Are they the and, oldest branch? Uh, they are not the oldest branch. The okay. Army is the oldest the branch. The Army is the oldest branch. Okay. I yeah, just figured Army since we've always had branch. ships, I didn't yeah. know if the Mar- the Marines, because typically Marines back in the day, like they were guarding, they were the fighters on the ships, right? Um, I'm actually not too sure about that. All I know about the Marine Corps is they were founded in a gay bar. <laughs> which is also accurate you know things yeah. were a lot uh, looser back in you know, ye olden american times you know yeah the toon tavern <laughs> is where the group the marine the continental marines in 1775 uh but yeah the toon tavern was a gay bar back in the day are you serious uh, man are you serious yeah. right now oh my god yeah that explains so much about marines i don't know i don't know if that's actually true it's here on the <laughs> blog but uh... <laughs> That's okay, it, all right. Uh, I'm not going to fully believe you then. I'm going to re- withhold judgment then. Yeah, withhold. If you are a Marine listening to this, can you please confirm that the Toon Tavern was indeed a gay bar? And if it is, that makes so much sense. Because <laughs> out of all the branches, the Marine Corps, the dudes in the Marine Corps, they're the gayest of them all. Yeah, they the will do homosexuality any. Yeah, you ever, you know, when you're playing like games with your buddies and you're like, you want to play gay chicken? Well, the Marine Corps is like, they play gay chicken yeah. <laughs> and they don't lose. So, <laughs> but anyways, let's get into some of the uh, pieces of pop culture here about the Marine Corps. Cause I'm excited to talk about a few of these. Cause first and foremost on my list here, I had to include it um, just cause it has one of the most, one of my personal favorite scenes out of any military movie. And it's heartbreak Ridge from 1986 with Clint oh, Eastwood. Yeah. Um, Good old Clint Eastwood, man, representing, the military branch as well, representing hardened, grizzled yeah. military veterans too, like in Gran yeah. Torino, you know, racist, hardened military yeah. veterans. Korean well, it's woman. funny because in Gran Torino, you know, he plays a Korean, an army veteran from the Korean War, which not a lot of people know that Clint Eastwood was actually a U.S. Army veteran who served during either. the Korean War. I did not know that so either, like, man. So he kind of just like played a version of himself that was just super racist. You know, <laughs> didn't like Asians. Or the Pacific, racist with a heart of gold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, Gran Torino is a great example. But I mean, it makes sense why Clint Eastwood plays an amazing military veteran, especially an old one. You yeah. know, just a salty dude that still has an M1 Grand. And he's like you know, a fine wine, box. you know, yeah. he gets better with age. Yeah, but in Heartbreak Ridge, he plays uh, Gunnery Sergeant uh, Highway, Thomas Highway, Thomas and he's Highway. a d- decorated veteran of two wars. And basically, before he retires, uh, he is given basically, or he's not given, he's placed in charge of a re- Marine recon platoon. And this platoon is like just full 
of miscreants and, you know, hoodlums and brigands, we like to say, in the Ranger Regiment. Because in our tenets, it's a, the regiment will not be consisted of hoodlums and brigands. Uh, <laughs> but this unit is totally just, you know, dudes who don't give a crap anymore. And they're just in it. And they're, you know, they're getting into trouble. They're getting into the bar fights. They're just being, you know, being rebellious. But Master Sergeant Gunnery Highway, or Gunnery Sergeant, uh, you know, Highway comes in and he's, you know, a decorated Marine, an extremely experienced Marine, an extremely disciplined Marine. And he takes over and the best scene in this entire movie is when he first shows up to the recon barracks and he, you know, he drives his truck in. There's two guys out front and he's like, is this the recon barracks or is this recon platoon? And the guy's like, no, speak English. And he's like, what about you? And the guy's like, no habla. And they're totally, you know, they're totally <laughs> Marines. And he walks in and they're playing pool and blasting music. And he uh, turns off the uh, the boombox, and the guys out front come in and switch the boombox immediately back on. He just picks it up and smashes it across the room, and he goes, he's like, I'm Gunnery Sergeant Highway. I drank more beer, pissed more blood, and banged more quit than all you numbnuts put together. And then it's just an amazing <laughs> monologue. He's then, so hetero too. He's like so hardcore, yeah. like eighties hetero. So you know, hardcore. Like, he's like queer yeah. bait, you know. Yeah, queer bait. <laughs> and then uh, literally, this guy who, uh, you know, on his way to this assignment, he comes across one of the guys on the bus, and he actually like kind of screws him over a little bit. And that guy, he sees that guy, and he's got like an earring in his ear, and he like rips it out. But then another dude comes up to him, and he's like, "Recon platoon kicks butt," and he like grabs his <laughs> nose, and the guy goes. Ow! <laughs> it's it's honestly the best scene ever. Um, but another reason why I really love this movie is because uh, at the end they like after all their training and you know you see this change in the platoon and it goes from a bunch of miscreants to like elite recon marines uh, and they in, and they basically you know the U.S. invades Grenada and they involve in like this rescue mission to you know get medical students. Uh, out of Grenada and like fight pretty much this uh this uh re- rebellion force mm-hmm. that usually has like a bunch of words put together like the People's Liberation Front of you it's know it's always the conflict. people too it's always like yeah it's always, always something it like people. that I don't recall exactly what they were called but uh that mission is actually based off the 75th Ranger Regiment's mission of Operation uh, Urgent Fury huh. where Rangers uh, jumped into Point Salinas. And uh, they actually rescued all of the uh, all of the uh, medical students from True Blue Campus. Uh, huh. So you know, I looked at it and I was like, "Wait, this looks super familiar. Why are they Marines? They should be Rangers." <laughs> and uh, but no, the, the movie's awesome. I absolutely love Heartbreak Ridge. It was mandatory viewing when I was in. Um, my team leader was obsessed with this movie. Um, so yeah, I had to throw it on this uh, this list and you know talk about it first and foremost, just because I love Heartbreak Ridge. It's awesome, and if you haven't seen it, go check it out. That's awesome, man. Heartbreak Ridge. I remember seeing that. Me and my brother Micah were allowed to watch pretty much anything as long as it didn't have boobs in it. Uh, so boobs. we watched Heartbreak Ridge, and we watched like Full Metal Jacket, uh, and uh, all all these all these really like really like adult themed or uh, really kind of like bloody kind of movies. Uh, but, uh, we can talk about, we can talk about full metal jacket here in a little bit if we want to, cause obviously it, it, uh, stands tall within the, the category of Marine themed movies, but I want to go, I, I want to stick with a theme that I've had in my heart for a while. I want to honor, I want to talk about the video game stuff first because I love video games and sure, I want to talk man, about the UNSC Marines from Halo, the of course constant companions to master chief, uh, with the never say die attitude and uh who's uh who's the sergeant ah oh, jeez now uh uh who's the guy the hardcore marine sergeant uh ooh yeah, sergeant he's what's... he's based off of a pwn Avery Johnson sergeant Avery, Avery Johnson Avery sergeant Avery Johnson Avery Johnson baby. always wearing the patrol cap yep yeah i love it i uh i love uh, all the characters they're they're great for comic relief they have the some of the best one liners, uh, like the hardcore, like oh, oh, I'm not like you know they'll never be able to take me down, or we gotta get out of here, man. Or, um, yeah. You can definitely and, tell that uh, they took a lot of inspiration from pop culture to write in the characters of the UNSC yeah. Marines. Plus, you never want to be a USNC Marine with a rocket launcher when Master Chief is around you. He will steal your <laughs> he gun. Will he will take, take your gun, and you will be left with a pistol. You'll be butt hurt. Yep. yep. Yeah, you'll be super butt hurt. But it's Master <laughs> Chief. What are you going to say to him? I remember in the, uh, I think it was Halo Three, 
uh, which which a lot of people think uh, a lot of people say this is the best Halo out of all of them. I really liked three, and I really liked um, I really like ODST. That was like kind of a unique slice out of the out of the norm. And then Halo Infinite was a lot of fun too, kind of the open world formatting. But um, uh, the marketing campaign for Halo three. Uh, had this really like serious spin on it where it was like they were interviewing survivors from like is they like almost like World War II survivors, but they were survivors yeah. of the of the war with the Covenant. And they were talking about their experiences with Master Chief, like I remember that day on the battlefield. And they get these old actors, these 70 and 80 year old actors, and you really yeah. it's like really kind of hardcore and deep. Yeah, uh, no, I've seen I've like seen what you're touching. talking about. It's, yeah, it's, it's a great it's a it's a commercial, right? It's a little like yeah. s- snippet of like uh, their marketing for one of the games. It's awesome. I love it. Yeah, it's yeah, it's super cool. You don't uh, that that's a really bold move because what they're basically doing is appealing or they're kind of emulating the you know greatest generation, World War Two generation, but it's it's for a fictional war for a video game. But yeah. I appreciate it they do it. They take it seriously and they don't kind of make fun of it, which in turn in a peripheral fashion, you know, honors uh, honors the actual World War II veterans or Vietnam veterans, you know. Well, well, well. Shopping for a car? Yep. Carvana made financing a car as smooth as can be. Oh, yeah? I got pre-qualified instantly and had real terms personalized just for me. Hmm, doesn't get much smoother than that. Well, I got to browse thousands of car options on Carvana, all within my budget. Doesn't get much smoother than that. It does. I actually wanted a car that seemed out of my range, but I was able to add a cosigner and found my dream car. It doesn't get much... Oh, it gets smoother. It's getting delivered tomorrow. Visit Carvana.com or download the app to get pre-qualified today. The South Dakota Stories, Volume 5. She used to dread the winter, the cold, driving in the snow. But that was before she started spending it in the right place. Now, wandering the snow puts a smile on her face, and breathing in the landscapes warms her spirit more than any coat. Because if South Dakota taught her anything, it's that it's never too cold to have too much fun. There's so much South Dakota, so little time. But, um, but yeah, we got to give respect. We're talking about, if we're talking about Marines, we got to talk about the UNSC Marines, uh, from Halo. Much respect. Uh, uh, may, may they live on in our hearts because I don't know about you, my playthroughs, they did not live long next to me, though I tried to save them. I could not, uh, they all seemed to die around me, but, uh, they'll live on in our hearts, folks. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Rest in peace, Marines, huh? (laughs) And, uh. Well, I just really want to do, since we're on the topic of video games, like Marine Corps are, you know, we have six days in Fallujah on the horizon yeah. here coming out, which should be an excellent portrayal of, you know, close quarter combat in Fallujah, which the Marines, you know, held a major role in. So I'm super looking forward to that. But like in the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, uh, the remake, you have the Devil Dog Platoon, right? Of that mission there, their- you're going through the town with them, yeah. Yeah, with them, and you're constantly with Marines the entire time, and uh, it's, you know, Call of Duty does an excellent job, because, I mean, let's be honest, in the original Modern Warfare 2, you were with a Ranger platoon, and then they switched, yeah, that's actually why I joined the Rangers, because I was like, (laughs) oh, I know them, they're in Call of Duty, oh, what's a Ranger? Uh, That's that's all you need to know, man, that's great, great research. Yeah, they're in Call of Duty. (laughs) Yeah, but no, they do an awesome job, too, of showing, you know, the Marine Corps in the Call of Duty series. Uh, so I think, you know, Call of Duty is one of those iconic military first-person shooter games that, you know, has been around for a long time and will probably be around for even longer and more games to come. Uh, but as long as they start keep, you know, as long as they keep pumping out, you know, video games featuring Marine Corps, I, I will always play them because it's so much fun mm-hmm. to pretend to be a Marine, you know, because uh, they're so good. <laughs> but uh yeah i i just wanted to talk about uh think about perceptions of marines i think one movie that does an excellent job of like showing it is american sniper even though it's about you know the navy seal uh sniper chris kyle rest in peace uh he the he works very closely with the marines during you know the invasion of iraq uh and you know his experiences fighting along the marine core uh, i'm pretty sure he says it in the book that like these dudes are you know s- he loves working with marines because uh, they're some some of the craziest son of a bitches he's ever met and they will they're just willing to fight like they want to fight yeah and that's something i deeply respect 
is uh you know somebody that has no you know no um consideration for their personal safety or health but only you know put the mission before them because that's what the marine corps does and that's mm-hmm. i think that's super cool you know yeah it's uh it, it's that like true warrior mindset to where like there's something bigger than myself and i think the marine corps completely emulates that to where you know they will go to to the ends of the world just to complete the mission because they are the marines and that's what they do and they fight so that's why uh, I just wanted to mention that really quick. You know, I'm sure you, there's. Well, you gave me an idea, Cameron. Uh, let me just talk about. You know, we talk the, in this day and age. There's very much like a debate about like uh, what is a man, what makes a man. You know, what is manhood, what is masculinity, all that kind of stuff. Oh, and you get deep, huh? What, what's yeah? Let's go deep. You said you well, want to get deep. <laughs> it's true. Well, you you gave you made me think of something that it's it's very it's something that very near and dear to my heart because I want to know what it means to be a man. Obviously, uh, even though I'm in my 40s now, we're all, I'm always going to be looking. I'm always going to be exploring and I'm always going to be growing as a man. So I got to know what that is, right? Yeah. Um, the only thing you need to worry about is the thing between your legs. That's, that's it. right. That makes a man yeah. if you've got that's one. That you would... <laughs> but uh, aggression, right? Aggression. I, w- I think it's safe to say that it, it's there's a good amount of evidence to suggest that men, by and large, generally speaking, are more aggressive, right? That's kind of a characteristic of masculinity of maleness yeah. of manhood right or maybe not manhood but like just boys are aggressive you know and then yeah. uh so, so there's the idea of being a marine the idea of um channeling the, your aggression like if you are an aggressive person you're an aggressive man and you don't know where to channel that or how to channel that aggression there's a place for you in society and that place is called the Marines. The Marine Corps. <laughs> because yeah, the Marine Corps. We, we tend to think of like aggression as an automatically negative thing. And I don't think that's necessarily true. It just depends on where sure. you channel that aggression. And yeah. if you need, can channel that aggression to taking that hill or blowing up that bunker or charging the enemy position or even just within the discipline, like the, the crucible of discipline within Marines, like channeling in that molding that aggression and keeping it in check through discipline and principles yeah. and, and good ideas about living, then man, what a powerful tool that aggression could be Extreme for powerful. good. Um, yeah. as long as you're able to channel it in a healthy direction. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, that's, I, that's the thought I had. Yeah, no, it, it, you know, I completely agree because controlled aggression, I think is what is, what is true masculinity, right? Yeah. Uh, the ability to be capable of violence is what separates, you know, the men from the boys. Uh, but, you know, just because you're capable of violence doesn't mean that's the only way. You know, I, there's, a, there's a famous saying that you've probably heard that I'm a big fan of. And it's like, I'd rather be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. And it's, yeah. you know, so it's like having the mental and physical uh, capability to control your aggression. And like you said, channel it in either a, you know, in it, channel it into a positive space, uh, I think is, you know, something the Marine Corps does exponentially well, um, because they are fighters true and true. Like every Marine, I've never met a Marine that I'm like, huh? Yeah, I did. I, I don't want to go to war with you because, because, you know, I don't think you're going to be able to get after it over there. Like yeah. that, even the smallest guy, even the skinniest guy is just like, you know, I'm a Marine and fighting's what we do. So mm-hmm. let's get it. So, yeah, controlled controlled aggression definitely, uh, you know, separates the men from the boys there. But uh, cool, man. Yeah, no, I, I think that was that was fun to talk about. Yeah, I, like, I think so. Like exploring but, uh, the, that part of it. Yeah. Exploring the heart of it. Yeah, it's 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 a will always be, you know, a search to figure out, especially nowadays when there's so many ideas of what like a man should be or like the idea of what masculinity is. Uh, you know, I think if you got a good heart you're, and you know where you, you know, where, know where you fit and how to properly play that role um, is, you know, a big factor in it. And obviously you have like, you know, your moral compass to guide you and your yeah. values and your principles and then your physical fitness and all these things combined. Um, as long as you, you know, can control them and you work on them, I think you're, you're going to be in good hands. I would love to talk about, I'm, I don't know. You, let's talk about Full Metal Jacket, man. Since you brought yeah, it up, yeah. We, well, we got to bring it up, man. It's so we iconic within within movie history, and it of course does center half the movie. Half the magic of this movie is just them in training. It's kind yeah. of basically two movies. The first half is 
in training with R. Lee Ermey, who is the iconic yeah. drill sergeant uh, or drill instructor there. And then the other half is them actually in Vietnam. In Vietnam, yeah. And uh, and Stanley Kubrick does a great job of, you know, this is another one where it's it's not like a glorification of the Marines by any stretch. It's yeah. like it's, it's just like, wow, this sucks. These yeah. guys are psychopaths. Yeah. yeah. And and yeah, Arlie Ermey is like this uncompromising drill instructor, like old school drill instructor. Yeah. And honestly, and, perfect. 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 Yeah. He did. Yeah, I've never seen a drill instructor like personified to a T other than his performance because he was an old school marine right yeah he was a marine and he yeah. uh he was actually you know the, the story goes that he was the advisor on the film and there was another guy who was cast as the drill instructor and he just wasn't quite wasn't quite cutting it and they uh, i don't know how it goes exactly but stan kubrick liked how arlie ermy was doing it and he like set him loose. And I think, uh, I, I don't know if it was exactly, you see now I'm getting my mythology mixed up, but that whole monologue in the beginning, when he's introducing himself and going around and just yelling at these dudes and making all these jokes, a lot of that was improvised because Arlie Ermey has that kind of experience or had that kind of experience in the Marines. And, uh, and really knew how to like, just lay into dudes into, in, in the, in the Marines, you know? Uh, yeah. So, and that really cemented Arlie Ermey as an actor. He think he'd done like one or two things before that point, but that was like, oh, this guy, this guy's got a career, you know, as a brand, yeah. you know. It's crazy. I just really respect, like, you know, the hardest part about being a drill instructor, in my opinion, or like a drill sergeant in the army, drill instructor for the Marine Corps, is coming up with like amazing things to say that yeah. hit hard. Yeah. And he does it perfectly. <laughs> like, literally, here's a quote from him. He's like, I bet you're the kind of guy that would fuck a person in the ass and not even give him the goddamn common courtesy to give him a reach around. I'll be watching you. <laughs> that's like, it, man. Yeah. That stuff, like that kind of gold yeah. is like, what? He even said, that's enough. Get on your feet, private pile. You have the best square your ass away and start shitting me Tiffany cufflinks or I will definitely fuck you up. <laughs> like, that, like, who comes? Like, that is gold. Like, that is gold. Somebody's got to yeah. somebody's got to set us straight. You guys send us a, 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 a direct message on Instagram or an email, pcfmpodcast at gmail.com. Let us know. I want to make sure I get my stories right because I heard that a lot of what he said was improv. They just kind of let him go. You tell me I if it was so. improv yeah. or if it was, you know, if it was like written down, Stanley Kubrick had like dialogue for him. But um, yeah, man, it's just like so it'll go down in history as as one of the great great yeah. movie monologues of all time. I was so sad when he gets like blown away by Vince Vaughn. Yeah, oh, Vincent Vincent Private D'Onofrio. Pi- yeah, Private Pile. Private Pile. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. uh, I mean, this this whole like you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? This whole display of what Marine core basic training is like because everybody you know i think a big topic and a huge topic especially for people wanting you know with some interest of joining the military it's like which basic training is the hardest Mm. and i definitely you know i and to be honest like which drill instructors are the most brutal which drill sergeants are the most brutal and i had some brutal ones in the army Mm. but the one thing i'll always respect about the marine corps is just the level of commitment that the drill instructors or the DIs put into their job every yeah. single day. Yeah. Like watching their shark attacks, like the Marine Corps takes it, you know, 10 times out of 10 times with the intensity and the type of drill instructors that are there, the class and caliber of them. Like just the voice they use. I don't know how yeah. they are able to keep you know, their voice for 12 weeks just by going, you want to talk to me? You want to talk to me? Like, I would either at the end get out of the Marine Corps and become a metal singer or, you know, or just completely fry my vocal cords over the course of doing that for years. Well, they like, got so it. much respect. I wonder I wonder if in drill instructor or drill search at school that, that, that they go to before they become drill They get vocal lessons? Army. Yeah, I wonder if they do actually get legitimate <laughs> vocal, like how to... Raise the soft palate, support yeah. with the diaphragm, you know, yeah. because it's it's a legitimate concern. They're going to be yelling and talking all day long, you yeah. know. For I don't a, think a, a they do. Part. You don't think so? It's just like I don't think they ability. do because I've watched interviews with like drill instructors, and even when they're just talking normally, they're like, "My name is you know, Staff Sergeant <laughs> Gutierrez," and like I think they permanently screw themselves up just by doing that. But I mean, uh, hell, respect because it definitely makes the Marine like the drill instructors 
the job of the drill instructor, the job of the drill sergeant is to create the soldier, to create the Marine. And like without it, I don't think the Marine Corps would be what they are. So hats off to all the DIs out there. It's uh, I mean, that's ironic because they have, yeah, the DI they don't hat, take it. You know? I, I remember yeah, I got, don't one, take the hat that uh, for, I got one store from basic training. Uh, uh, don't about, touch the hat about the hat. Yeah. We were, uh, we were getting ready for a ceremony. might've been the turning blue ceremony. And uh, me and another guy were lacking, I think some pins or something like that. We had to go pick some stuff up. So the drill instructor or the drill sergeant volunteered to take us off base and, and go to the local sew shop and, and pick that stuff up. And I remember riding in the riding in the truck with him and I was in the middle and his his hat was up on the dash and we were we were going through some rough roads and we went up like a bump and the hat popped off the dash and I happened to have my hands kind of up palms up like yeah. in my lap oh. just kind of sitting there you and then it the popped hat. up and it like landed in my hands my in my hands the hat landed in my hands and the drill sergeant went oh don't you move private don't you dare yeah. move don't you drop that and I was like, yeah. that was how I was for the remainder of the ride yeah. to the sub. There's shop. that mystique. Like, yeah. There's that. It's like the privilege for the hat. Because I have a story, too, about the hat. Because, like, you see this hat, and it is the signification. Like, that hat embodies, like, the army, you know? <laughs> and uh, I remember in my basic training, our barracks got, like, black mold. So we ended up moving to three separate barracks throughout huh. my entire OSIT. Huh. And uh, we finally got to our last barracks. And I remember there was, like... You know, it was obviously way nicer than the ones because my, uh, what was that? I was Delta 160, I think. Okay. Or Delta, I don't even remember my basic, but I was Delta Company. And like, we literally lived in like these trailer, like they were trailers in the middle of the Yeah, was it down the hill from the main one? Because I remember we were in trailers yeah. too. We were in extra trailers as well. Down, kind of yeah, down I think the it was hill, like, first of the 50th, I think. Training yeah, first, is it first? Yeah, 150. 150. So I was Delta Company, 150. I was Delta, and I think Fox Company was right next to us in trailers. Mm-hmm. And then the rest of them, Alpha Bravo, Charlie, and Eco were like on this nice facility up these giant hills. Nice. Um, but uh, yeah, I remember we we moved over to new barracks and like we got in there and they're way nicer than the trailers. And I like went into one room and there was a, a drill sergeant hat like just by itself over there. And all the guys were like, oh, what <laughs> And we had like some alone time, and like I remember, <laughs> oh, no. every we like reached up and we like grabbed it, <laughs> and I put it. We reached up, we grabbed it. And everybody's just like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and then I like put it on my hat. I put it. I put the hat on my head, just like they do, where it's like cocked in the front. And I was like, oh, it was yeah, it was crazy. But I would never want to be a drill sergeant. But hats nah. off to them. That's my hat store. I put the hat on. I actually got to put the hat on during oh, my man. basic training. Old you know. move, Cotton. Bold move, Cotton. We'll see how it plays out. Yeah, I was never caught either, so that was cool. Well, it's so hard because we're running out of time here, and there's so many great pieces of Marine Corps pop culture we want to talk about. But unfortunately, we're going to have to transition to our fan question. And it's not unfortunate because this is actually a really good fan question. Yep. And it comes to us via one of our patrons, uh, Johnny Poda. And he says, hey, guys, I have a duffel bag of so much of my great uncle now pass." Uh, R.I.P. Military things. He was a Marine, i.e. awards, uniforms, notebooks with notes, including how to break down an M16, old cologne. (laughs) Anyways, I'm curious in what I should do with it. I'm definitely not throwing it out, but I I also feel bad being stuck with a musty duffel bag. If a family member of yours came uh, came into this stuff after your passing, what would you want them to do with it? Or what would you feel appropriate? Or would you feel appropriate with keeping it with respect for him and his service? Well... Honestly, it's it's awesome to have you know such a amazing military lineage within yeah. your family. Yeah. Um. So you know, for me personally, uh, I would want my family to keep that stuff as a memento, just because you mm. know they, you, especially in the Marine Corps, you know, they say not as lean, not as green, but still a Marine. So, <laughs> <laughs> so once a Marine, always a Marine. So uh, Johnny, I think I think you should definitely keep it. Um, there are things you could do, especially with the rewards and or especially with the awards and the uniforms. You can create what's known as a shadow box, which is, you know, I have one in my back here with my like with my beret and everything and my call signs and my CIB, EIB, airborne wings and, you know, my ranger tab and scroll. Uh, but, you know, you can definitely, you know, bring that to, mm. you know, a framing store or an art store and they can, 
or you can go to Marshall's and get those shadow boxes and you can create like a nice memento for your, for your, uh, your great uncle's passing. I think that would be, you know, awesome to display the lineage of your family because it is, it isn't a very honorable thing to do to serve in the military. Yeah. Um, but for the duffel bag, you know, if you have, you can keep the rest of it, like the boots and everything in storage. Uh, but I definitely think taking, you know, the awards and the uniform itself and creating that shadow box would be the most honorable thing you could do. Yeah, man. No, totally 100% what you're talking about, Cameron. I would say even further than that, to be, if you can take the uniform, maybe get it dry cleaned and put it away in some sort of uh, sealed bag, like the notebooks and the notepad, yeah. all that kind of stuff. You probably throw away the old cologne. It's probably just yeah. uh, all or use it. Or know? use it. It's probably yeah. yeah. It smells like super mold and yeah. musk. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, find ways to preserve what you can, and then like Cameron said, to display what you can. Go and get a shadow box made. I think that'd be a, that's a really good idea because we part of cult, part of popular culture the role of popular culture is to preserve and carry forward the stories that we want to tell about our society and all of that helps to shape our society and so when it comes to honoring and remembering heroes that is one of the most important things i think that defines a society is who we honor and who we hold high as a hero and so yeah. we want to honor the military men and women who have served in the past because we want that to help define the character of our nation so preserving those things and taking the time to honor uh, honor all of the keepsakes that you have now inherited from your great uncle. I think that's going to be, yeah, I think that's going to be a really good idea, man. Nice. Okay. Awesome. Well, we hope we answered that Johnny for you. Good luck with all that awesome historical equipment and, you know, rest in peace to your great uncle and thank him for his service. Absolutely. The rest in peace. And I'll see you on stream, Johnny. Uh, so Cameron, it's time for our game. Are you ready? Ooh. I am ready, and I don't see it, so you're finally the Game Master. Uh, to make up for the last game, which was absolute murder on you, Cam, Chris has put together a nice, fun game. This well, game perfect. is called Simper Fi. And Semper is, Fi. It is entirely in Latin starting now. Domino no oh. patria. No. <laughs> <laughs> Domino no patria. No, 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 no. uh, the game is actually called Famous Marine or Just Some Guy pretty self-explanatory oh, i'm gonna give you a name yeah you tell me if this person was a famous marine or if they're just some other guy not a marine sure i mean uh, i should have brushed up on my famous marines if chesty's <laughs> in there i'll know that one but you might yeah you might recognize a few of these you might not you might have to guess but we'll start you off with an easy one which kind of gave i kind of gave it away but rob riggle rob riggle was a marine captain and is now a very famous uh comedian slash actor so yes. yes he was in the marine corps we'll definitely have to try to get him on the show sometime yes i tried will. reaching That'll out through like public means like instagram and stuff but i don't yeah. i don't think he reads that stuff so sure no he probably has a publicist or a, a social media team yeah but we will we will get rob riggle one day you, will. you hear that rob You're, we're coming for we're you coming for you rob mr riggle uh all right next one teddy grooman Teddy Grooman. I have no idea who this is, but it's a 50-50 shot here. Um, so Teddy Grooman, Teddy Grooman. I'm going to go ahead and say he was he was a Marine. Sure, why not? Let's do it, because I don't know anything about Teddy Grooman. You're a disgrace, Cam, and he was not a Marine. How He's could you? A, Teddy Grooman is just Teddy some Grooman? dude. He's just some just guy. Just some dude. Oh, just, just a made guy. up name. He probably made so, up his name, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or he just went on like LinkedIn or Facebook and typed in a name. It's Teddy Grooman probably lives in like Cleveland and works at Avon's. Yeah, he's or, a like, photographer works at a grocery store. in Florida yeah. or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next one. Gregory Mandel. Gregory Mandel. That sounds very Marine Corps. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that he was a Marine. You are wrong again. Oh you my don't God. know your famous Marines, apparently, or at least you don't know all of them or the ones that aren't. Do you know Greg how many Mandel Marines there were? <laughs> There's you know? at least over over 100, I'm sure. There's over yeah. 100 for sure. <laughs> no, Greg Mandel is just some guy, some name that K Chris either pulled out of his out of his poop shoot or from the Internet. So his poop shoot. Yeah. All right. Well, we already talked about this one, so you're probably going to get it. But Chesty Puller. Yeah, Chesty Puller, very famous Marine. I even mentioned it when the game started. I was like, if Chesty's in there, I'll know that. So Chesty yep. Puller, definitely a very famous Marine. Good, man. You're 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 half and half. You're fifty fifty. Do you now for bonus points that's totally made up by me, uh, do you have a, any famous quotes of things that he said? Because Chris has one here of a famous quote Ooh. that he's credited <sighs> with. Uh no, I do not know quotes from Chesty. <laughs> I'm unfortunately I know who Chesty Puller was. All right. 
but I don't know things he've said. I'm pro- I've probably heard this quote, but I couldn't connect it to him. So what is it? The quote is, we've been looking for the enemy for some time now. We found him. We're surrounded. That simplifies things. Yes. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. We found him. We're surrounded. That simplifies things. Cool. Nice. Chesty's the man. Yeah, he is. A good Marine name. All right, next one. James Mattis. James Mattis. Of course, he is the general of... Or he was the general, but yeah, Mattis. Mad, what, what was his name? Mad Dog Mattis. Yeah, he was a Marine for sure. Yep, famous Marine. He was Secretary of Defense from 2017 to 2019. Yeah, yeah. No, we had a... Uh, when Mattis first came into his position... We used to have a because you know in the military how they display all the pictures of like the commanders. Yeah. Well, we had a picture of James Mattis, and it was his head photoshopped on the Virgin Mary, and uh, <laughs> and he was holding. It was like the one, the picture of the Virgin Mary where they like that she has like her hand up like in the L shape with the two fingers, ah. and then in the other hand he was holding a frag grenade. <laughs> um, so that was his picture in Bravo Company Two Seven Fives. Uh, um, wall of command for a little bit, but yeah, James Mattis, uh, yeah, Mad Dog Mattis. I like it, man. You're you're doing good. You're on a roll now. Let's see if you can keep it going. The next name is John Glenn. John Glenn. That just sounds like a super average guy. Um, so I'm just gonna shoot with just a normal guy. Ooh, you couldn't be more wrong. John Glenn was a famous Marine. He was the first American to orbit the Earth. He is oh, featured heavily in the that. movie The Right Stuff. The Right Stuff. John Glenn, huh? Yeah, John. American Marine Corps aviator, engineer, astronaut, businessman, and politician. There He's the thir- He was the third American in space. First American to orbit the Earth, circling it three times. Oh, very cool. Yeah. He, he learns yeah. something every day. Yeah, and he went on to, I think, he had a, a, a political career as well. But yeah, very famous uh, aviator, uh, astronaut in, in that early day space program stuff. Yeah. Nice. So, next next name... Orville Richard Burrell. Orville Richard Burrell. I'm pretty sure he was a Marine. You are correct. Do you know what yeah, he's, that's what else very... he's known for? Orville Rittenbacher. Popcorn. It's Shaggy. It's Shaggy. Shaggy. Oh, Shaggy. Yeah. I'm still working on my Shaggy <laughs> voice. <laughs> yes. It's not there yet. I'm still working on it. Sugar. Uh, I don't yeah. think I'm there either. Uh, he, no. Mine sounds like working. a Muppet. <laughs> yeah, you're sound, yeah, we both sound like Shaggy Muppets. <laughs> but uh, oh, I had no idea. That's Shaggy, huh? Yeah, Shaggy's in, real name. He was in for a little while. I think I remember him telling the story that he found out about, I don't know if he found out about a single or or some of his music taking off while he was deployed. I may be wrong about that, but uh, Orville Orville Richard Burrell. I definitely think that going by the name Shaggy is probably better for his his music, yeah. music career. Orville, yeah, Orville uh, Richard Burrell. But uh, all right, so you got that one. We have two more. Derek Masters. Derek Masters. Oh man, it's a cool name. I'll be honest. Masters has a last name. <sighs> Derek Masters. I'm going to go ahead and say he's just a regular guy, but it is a cool name. He does have a cool name, and he is just some guy. You are correct. Okay, man. perfect. Yes. Just some guy with a cool name. Yeah, yeah not Derek a Marine, Masters. No. I mean, a lot. all these people have pretty cool names except for Orville Richard Burrell, but he is Shaggy, yeah. so that's cool. But he is too. Shaggy, so that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, last one. This is for all the marbles. B. Arthur. B. Arthur. B. Arthur. I'm going to go ahead and say he was a Marine. Uh, that's a huge shot in the dark, but you know you are it. you are right, but in a wrong sort of way. Uh, B. Arthur was a Marine, but this is actually an actress from the Golden Girls. Remember oh, that show, really? The Golden Girls? She was, yeah, t- I think she was the tall one. Um, but she was a Marine. Yeah. So oh I, no I way! Little, little background on her before she took to oh, Broadway awesome. stages and became a beloved Golden Girl. Bernice Frankel, better known as B. Arthur. Joined thousands of other women, paving the way yeah. for women in the armed forces. Details of her time in the U.S. Marines can be found uh, in her official military personal profile. Personal file. Yeah, look at her. Jeez, I see this picture for Marine Corps. Yeah, and that's awesome. Staff 15th. Sergeant Bernice Frankel. Yeah, Marine Corps, 1943 through 45. I nice, think that's dude. super. I had She's no idea. Hardcore. Like that. That gives that. That gives a lot of a little bit of insight into her, her the type of character that she plays. She always plays like these like really kind of forward, very strong, very strongly opinionated women. So it makes sense that she would be a Marine. Yeah. 
Thank you for being a friend. <laughs> yeah, I love the Golden Girls. My fiance, Sydney, loves Golden Girls. So I'm definitely, I know who B. Arthur is now, but I had no idea she was a Marine Corps. So yeah. Semper Fi, Bernice. Yeah, Semper Fi, B. Arthur. Yeah, and, and rest in peace as well. F's up in chat yeah. for, for B. Arthur. But. Yeah, F's up in chat. Well, that's it, Cameron. You did you did very well. I think you were uh, over the average uh, in terms of getting them right. We kind of stumbled yeah, we'll out of the 50, gate. 50. But yeah, yeah. yeah. I think you Picked got it over up 50, in the end, 50, man. 50, yeah, yeah. I'm happy with that performance. You know, yeah, you know. So sometimes job, you 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 start a little shaky, but as long as you finish it strong in the end, that's all that matters. But yeah, that was a fun one, man. Thanks, Chris, for that game. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for taking it easy on us. Yeah, and more importantly, thank you, everybody listening to this podcast, for listening to this podcast. We uh we hope you had a fun time, and we hope you know we did our devil dogs right. And, you know, honored them in the way we feel that they should be honored by calling them crazy, sadistic, and just awesome <laughs> so, Marines. Yeah. I don't want to call them soldiers because they're not. They're freaking Marines. Yes, we we, uh, we are very proud of their military service, and, and you should be too if you were a Marine or if you know a Marine. Please uh, be proud of your service or thank them for their service. Uh, yeah. They, uh, yeah, they're hard chargers. They're going to take that yeah. hill, folks. And we are going to take you out of this episode. It's not a very good segue. There you go. We'll, we'll That's see, okay. we'll see just you next remember. week, folks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just remember the largest seaborne operation in history was done by the Army. And with that, folks, have an amazing rest of your day or night. And we will catch you on the next one. Izzy, cue music. What's going on, everybody? You just listened to the free version of the PCFM podcast. If you want full-length versions of podcast episodes, plus much, much more, head on over to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash PCFM podcast. That is right, Israel. If you want access to this full episode, you have to subscribe to the Fuzzy Private tier, which is our cheapest tier on Patreon at $5 a month. But if you are interested in a little bit more, we also have the Salty Sergeant tier at $8 a month and the Lifer tier at $12 a month. So hopefully we will see you there, PCFM family. Cue music. Well, well, well. Shopping for a car? Yep. Carvana made financing a car as smooth as can be. Oh, yeah? I got pre-qualified instantly and had real terms personalized just for me. Hmm, doesn't get much smoother than that. Well, I got to browse thousands of car options on Carvana, all within my budget. Doesn't get much smoother than that. It does. I actually wanted a car that seemed out of my range, but I was able to add a cosigner and found my dream car. It doesn't get much... Oh, it gets smoother. It's getting delivered tomorrow. Visit Carvana.com or download the app to get pre-qualified today. For the ones who get it done, the most important part is the one you need now. And the best partner is the one who can deliver. That's why millions of maintenance and repair pros trust Granger, Because we have professional-grade supplies for every industry, even hard-to-find products. And we have same-day pickup and next-day delivery on most orders. But most importantly, we have an unwavering commitment to help keep you up and running. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done.